Hi, and welcome to the walkthrough for ECE 3714 Lab 6, the Flight Attendant Call Button Lab. Today we're going to uh, create a small um, finite state machine. So the first thing that we want to do is download our files. We can download our files <clears throat> uh, by clicking on the zip link and uh, just downloading those. Okay, and so once we have those in our downloaded file, we can uh, go ahead and save those. Okay, and uh, we will save those. And that will uh, be placed in our downloads. And so now uh, we'll go ahead and save those by opening up our um, folder and just moving those to a convenient location. So we'll copy those to um, one of our convenient locations. We can put those in uh, someplace that does not have a space. <clears throat> uh, and so um, we will put that, for me, I will put that in lab six. Okay, and so we will save those there. Okay, so once you have those, you could actually go ahead and extract them if you'd like. We can extract all to this location as well. Okay, all right, the next thing that we want to do is go ahead and take a look at the manual. So if we go back and um, go to our web page on the Google Sites, we have the manual, so we can click on that. And we see that what we want to do is we want to create a um, project that handles the flight attendant call button. This is, um, this is in your textbook in example 3.5, as well as in this class slides. We've gone over this several times. We've stepped all the way through this project. And so you should have multiple ways to access this. <clears throat> But this is the finite state machine that we want to implement, okay? And so if we take a look at uh, that finite state machine, we know that the first thing that we want to do is capture the function, okay? Okay, so <clears throat> we have captured the function. If we take a look at <clears throat> our finite state machine, we have this already done. So here is our finite state machine. Step one is all done. The next thing that we want to do is we want to set up the architecture. We have to determine what the width of the register needs to be to represent each of the states. Taking a look at our finite state machine, we have two states here, uh, light off and light on. And so we take the ceiling function of log to the base 2 of the number of states, or log to the base 2 of 2, which is 1. And so we have one flip-flop that is required for this state register. Okay. And so <clears throat> the next thing that we want to do is to go ahead and encode the states. <clears throat> So we can encode both of our states. We have two states, light off, and we're going to encode light off at, with a zero, and we're going to encode light on with a one. And so wherever we have light off, we're going to replace it with a zero, and wherever we have light on, we'll replace it with a one. Doing that for the next state as well, okay? I have already created the uh, state table. Here is basically the truth table, and so, <clears throat> Uh, you can basically just uh, create the truth table, the state table, um, to have all of your data. And as I've mentioned in class, I like to have separate columns, one for the present state in the verbose form with all of the names, and then one with the columns for the encoded states. And so we have the present state encoded, and we have the next state encoded. Okay, looking at our uh, controller design process, the next thing we need to do is basically just implement the combinational logic. And so we know that we can create equations. And so we have equations for our next state and we have our equation for L. So two equations that we're going to write for this project. 
and we can <clears throat> um, write the equation for uh, Q next, just looking to see where we have ones. We have five rows where Q is equal to one. We see here five rows where Q is equal to one. Q next is equal to one. And so then just uh, writing it in terms of Q, call, and cancel. Those are our three inputs, our present state, our call, and our cancel are our inputs into our next state equation for Q next. Okay. <clears throat> and then we also, and we can minimize if we want to. Okay. Um, we also want to write an equation for L, for our output L. We see that we have four rows where L is equal to one the last four rows where L is equal to one, and we can write equations for that as well. And so <clears throat> then we have, um, we can't see the equation here. Let me just expand this a little bit, and we would be able to see the equation. So <clears throat> we have our equation L is just equal to the present state. Okay. The next thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and <clears throat> implement the combinational logic. So we want to bring up Quartus and we want to <clears throat> create a project. Now I have created a project called FACB, short for Flight Attendant Call Button. This is the name of the project that you want to use. That's what's used in the test bench waveforms. So use FACB rather than actually writing out Flight Attendant Call Button. <clears throat> You then want to take your um, your .v file, okay, called um, tb. I'm sorry, cb underscore com, and you're going to basically recreate your equations. Just writing the equations for next state and for um, l. Create a symbol from that. It's creating a symbol. Come down here, create symbol files, and then you'll have that. And then create your BDF. Okay, we know how to create our BDF. Coming up to File and choosing New and creating Block Diagram Schematic File. Uh, save this as FACB.BDF. Okay. You can then add your CBCOM symbol as well as your flip-flop that's needed for our state register. Okay. <clears throat> Using the names call, cancel, and clock, all lowercase, and then using the output name L, uppercase L, we can have all of our inputs and outputs. We also want to have a, um, <clears throat> a representation of our, um, of our state out. And so <clears throat> we're going to um, put in our state as, as a wire. And we're going to create, get this symbol called out buffer. Okay, just coming up to symbols and going to the libraries and finding <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry, going to primitives and going to the buffers. Okay, you can find the um, <clears throat> alternate out buffer. Okay, and so this is what you want to use so that you can output this internal signal called state out. So we're basically taking the internal signal called state and we're putting it to a port, an output port called state out. <clears throat> and this will allow us to be able to watch on the LEDs what state we're in, just to, so that we can prove to ourselves that this is really working the way that we want it to. Okay. And notice that state out is also lowercase. So <clears throat> once you've done that, that creates your BDF. That is your top level file. And you can just use that <clears throat> as your um, project, you can save that and then run your tests. Okay. When you create your um, model sim, make sure and set it up 
so that you can read all of the names of the inputs, the outputs, as well as the testing names. You want to be able to, to read the names of what the tests are. So you have that, and you basically also want to be able to see the state out. You want it to know what state it in, is in, and you also want to know what the output is. And so there we have it, and that's what you'll have to do for um, the first part of Lab 6. <clears throat> then you're going to program your board, and you should be able to use switch 9 for call, switch 8 for cancel, and switch zero as the clock. Right now we're using a switch for the clock. We'll switch over to our 50 megahertz clock um, in, for um, part 1B. Okay, thanks for listening.